let the minutes reflect that I called the meeting to order at 12 o'clock, even though I didn't exactly call the meeting to order. <laughs> that we, we welcomed all members and uh, had, had Leila introduce himself to us uh, and tell us a little about his background. We have all members present. So we have, we're a five member commission. Uh, three members is a quorum, so we can always meet even if we just have three members. There are two alternate positions, uh, both of which are empty at the moment, but there is a person in line for one of the alternate positions. And if anyone comes across someone who's a not a Democrat, <laughs> uh, they can apply for the other alternate position. So they would have to be a Republican or an unaffiliated voter. So keep that in mind if you run into anyone who might be interested. Our first order of business is approving the minutes from March 16th, if someone would make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Marge. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Marie. Does anybody have any questions about the minutes or corrections? You know, I made a correction of one little typo and that's been corrected. Okay, seeing nothing, no other comments on the minutes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Okay, the minutes are approved unanimously, thank you. I don't believe, do we have anyone here from the public, Layla? Is there anyone on who wants to comment? No. Nope, okay. So we have uh, no public comments, so we can move right along to our staff report. And the only thing I would ask, Layla, we have uh, Russell. Oh, you know what? Members should perhaps introduce themselves if you, because Russell is new to our committee. So I'll let you go around the table and introduce yourselves. Make sure you know each other's names. Well, I'll Russell. Yeah, yeah, please. Russell Spaulding. Mike Stilton. Marie Levinson. Meredith Key. Great. And Layla, uh, Russell is new to the committee and Meredith has been an alternate, but has only been at a, a few meetings. So just know when we use the language, CDBG and some of that, we should probably explain to people what any of those abbreviations mean. And just know you're talking to some people who are, who are new and learning. Okay? Yep. Terrific. Okay, I'll start. Um, so, um, primarily, uh, my the primary role that I feel in the department is covering our community development block grant uh, that we get to the state for small uh, towns in particular. Um, we applied in 2017 and 2019. Those are just more recent grants that we were awarded. Um, the 2019 grant that we awarded, we worked at Mr. River Homes um, uh, remodeling. And we did an extension for that in 2020, I believe, or 2021, one of the two years, um, because some of the work that we were doing there was not complete, and we needed more funding, and so um, to further complete. The reason why um, we extended it in part because um, not just state requirement, but we also don't want to have to do a job on one project and then walk away because funding is not there. So we try to make sure that. Uh, uh, rehabilitation or whatever remodeling that we're doing that is um, up to standard. Really. So that's why that happened. A lot of the work that happened since Tavis had talked to some of the uh, committee members um, was around um, some exterior improvements. Um, the exterior rail um, trip hazard was worked on and completed. Um, and primarily, um, some of the closeout activity was done with Mystic River Homes. So a lot of the work was done early on, um, but since we had met for most of the sorry, 
Um, it was mostly just making sure the contractors finish up the work um, they were doing. Currently, I don't know, uh, I think Kath had talked about uh, our consultant that works with us within that project, his name is Andy, um, who's just working out on the close out um, items on that project. So it's based mostly paperwork, a lot of it is required by the state to make sure that um, what we said in our plan we would do, that it is what we did, and then uh, some uh, documentation around that to ensure that we are able to uh, verify um, that the work was done. So, so, so all the work is completed, it's just paperwork yeah, now? Yeah, for now, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's just making sure. And a lot of that is also when you close the project, so every grant, so every project, if you want to close that, has its own grant. And so when you close that, you don't just close the construction aspect of it, but you have to do the grants paperwork to, to close up with that, that work. And so we have multiple grants we are working on, um, but every grant we close it out separately. So, so that's what's going on right now. Um, completion for that project, and when I say completion, I mean the close out phase of it. Uh, we're looking at October, end of October. Um, funding for that grant also ends in October, so uh, we'll be right in line with that. Any questions for that one? Oh, um, again, uh, community block grant uh, program also we applied for COVID-19 PPE um, grant in 2021, 20, I believe. I'm sorry, I wasn't here when all this was happening. A lot of dates. I'm trying to remember everything. Um, and so, um, and I know you guys discussed this a little bit um, about um, because we applied for grant to create a stockpile of um, COVID-19 protective uh, personal, personal protective um, equipment, all of that is masks, um, self-test kits, um, gloves, um, things of that nature. Um, I think in your discussion in your last meeting was the expiration date on some of those items. Um, yes, that's of great concern and um, in part not only for expiration purposes, but because we want to make sure that we use the stockpile as we intended that we use it for. Um, so I did follow up after your meeting and just kind of check on what the expiration date on some of those things were. Um, the self test kit, um, initially um, the FDA had approved them for three months from manufacturing. Another letter was sent out to approve them until January 2023. However, um, the date on the box itself is that initial three months mm -hmm. date. So that's where we are with those right now. Is you know how do you work around? You know the packet itself has a date. However, um, the approval um, at federal level is uh, given us until January of 2023. And so trying to figure out how we distribute those, you know, ensuring we capture the right language as to uh, and let everyone know that you know they are within. Uh, the expiration date for the self tested. The gloves, um, the expiration date of those are December 2025, so we have time to work with those. Um, the KN95 uh, masks, um, they don't have the expiration date, but they do say three years from manufacturing, so um, again, those aren't necessarily put together right now. Mostly it's the self tested, those had a three month initial. Uh, this is the expiration date from manufacturing. Um, see what else was there. Yeah, I think those were the items that had expiration dates that you know I had to review and all that stuff that you guys on. Um, you also have quantities on what we have left. Um, I can email this to you guys if you want. That would be good. That's a long list. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you want to. And no one yeah. remember. But some of the major events that we have um, worked around um, to ensure that we try to get the materials out to public. For now, since I started, um, not since, but what I've also worked towards too was um, making sure that we come into the annex the building, the space maps, both for adults and kids. Um, we are looking at um, seeing if any other public buildings require, or not require, that would like to have a station like that so we can. Um, make sure people have access to masks um, if they need them. Um, and also, we contacted the fire department, the Pequannock Bridge Fire Department. We gave them some supplies. We gave them um, 
gloves and some uh, disinfectant sprays too that they used. We didn't give them a lot. We gave them enough to work with for now because I think as uh, my supervisor and I talked about that this is a stockpile. You know, you know, just trying to get rid of it, everything, but also making sure we're able to help the public uh, in, as needed. I know. I know. I was at the senior center recently and they were available at the senior center. And when people were asking for the tests, they were explaining to people that the expiration date, even though it says this on the box, but the CDC has said that they're still good for months. So when that's was that? good. When were you there? That, that was a recent visit. Oh, that was just a week or two ago at the senior center. Okay, and the reason I'm asking that is because that's the next place I was going to reach out to and see if they had supplies still or if they needed more. Yep, that's you I'm certainly, asking. certainly reach out, but they did have them when I was there. Yep. So where can we get tests? Tests, um, as of right now, we do not have them this way anyway. Um, we have them with us. Um, I'm not sure how much we have out of you know, from what we just used initially. We did a few runs. Um, to where we um, kind of had set up where people can drive by and pick up some tests. Um, because of the expiration date, I believe we paused on distributing those, um, those self tests until now. I think it was late June that the FDA gave the extension to um, January 2023. So um, the next thing is to figure out how do we distribute those self tests and maybe include a note that specifies the, the expiration date that justifies that reason. Initially, I thought maybe we could turn out, you know, another expiration date. That that's a lot of test kits. <laughs> so I think we are at the point of figuring out what's uh, legally an appropriate method to distribute those self test kits. Because technically, per the box itself, they are expired. But you know, you need to do the research to figure out that they are not truly expired. So. Well, if they're going to expire in January, we've got to get them moving. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, because I could use some. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, yeah, it's just a matter of figuring out where I mean, at the, at the senior center, for instance, it seems to me, one, they're doing it by just telling people when they give them the tests, they tell them. But, you know, if there was a sign made, you know, rather than trying to put a new label on each box, but if there was a big poster, a big sign that said, these tests, the box says they expired this date, but the CDC says they're perfectly good to use until this date, I would think, for me, that would be sufficient notice for the public. But, um, I don't know what anybody else thinks. Yeah. And yeah. I, I agree with you, Marge. We want to get the tests out there before they expire, let people have right. access to them. Uh -huh. I think also a concern for us too is that we don't want people saying we are handing out expired tests. You know, right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. You know, people can misuse that, you know, that information. Because truly, if you look at the part, the date does say that. But, but I understand what you're saying. If, we, if at least I'm signing it, then, exactly. you know, yeah, it's just, yeah. Well, you still get the people that aren't aware of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if if a, if a parent gets a box and, and takes it home and they, you know, their children come over two weeks later and they go, hey, mom, dad, this, this is already expired. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's... Good, good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that line right away. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. But Where, like you said, with the amount of kids that you have, you can't print out new expiration stuff. I mean, you, by the time you got the last one on, they'd all expire. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I believe like um, um, locations that have like uh, populations that are, mm -hmm. you know, predominantly uh, visiting that location, then we can definitely drop off a few and ensure right. that sure. it's communicated to them sure. that yep. right. repeatedly. Whereas the issue is with people that the one time distribution. But sometimes you go pick up something and someone talks to you, but you just grab yep. and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. So I think, yeah, I think the next thing is figuring out how we distribute those before it gets too late. Right, exactly. Yeah, because we only have 
two and a half months. <laughs> uh, three, 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 and three, and three and a half months. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> But the did note was that um, we're coming up on cold season again, so for sure it's going to be very handy for a lot of houses yes. to make sure they have test kits just to make sure you know um, people are able to test before. Sure. Um, okay. 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 Um. Anything? Anything else on that, or can we move on to the uh, new CBBG grant? Yeah, no, um, for now that is it. Um, like I said, there's quantities. We try to keep track of everything. Um, from what was purchased and what was sent out already, um, not only for ourselves, but for the grant purposes. They want to know who, not who exactly, but what was distributed when, was it an event, was it a one time type of, type of deal. Um, so the new CDBG for 2022 application, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Grasso Gardens, mm -hmm. I guess. I'm the new person. <laughs> I'm already on you. I didn't know. I didn't know. I'm already on you. Oh, okay. I didn't know about it. So I have to learn. <laughs> and everything. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep up with everyone. Um, um, there's and, all the there. But um, um, again, Andy's working with us. He's our consultant with us that project for now. Um, and um, we are currently waiting on funding from the state. Um, we suppose. So Le Leila, can I just stop you and for me? So yes. have have we have we submitted a grant application? Oh yes, yes, that was yeah. submitted. Yeah. Okay. Do you know do you know when that grant application was submitted? I wanna say if not end of um, May, sometime in May or, or June, one of those. Okay. Months. Okay. So yes. the application was submitted. I apologize, there's a train or something going by me here. <laughs> Weird noise. Um, and uh, how much are we applying for? One and a half million? Um, so, for the, this? so for Grasso Gardens, um, the project of all cost uh, was estimated over $10 million. The overall project cost was estimated over $10 million. What we applied for, again, um, this for this project, we are collaborating with um, the housing authority and the owner. Um, and there's our funds too. What we from community development block grant uh, have applied for is two million. Two million? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. So the limit, yeah. the limit's been raised. It used to be one and a half. Yes, we applied okay. for two million. Um, again, that's my overall project cost. Mm -hmm. That's just our portion of it. To um, we are contributing, um, I believe it's a hundred thousand. Both the housing authority they a hundred thousand. As um, by us, I mean the town a um, hundred thousand from our program income um, account. Mm -hmm. The program income uh, account is um, financing set aside for housing rehabilitation projects for. Um, say single family home, you know, smaller type scale. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that too. Uh, but for the Grasso Gardens project, um, yes, the, sorry, I thought uh, your earlier meeting uh, covered the application. I think maybe maybe the timeline of that meeting and the application were right around the same time. And our, our last meeting was canceled because we didn't have a staff person. So oh, that okay. oh, this is okay. Okay. so that's why this is the and then this is Russell's first time at the meeting. So that's why I want to go over those things. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll double check on dates to make sure you guys know sure. what okay. that is specifically. Because I, like I said, when I started, there's a lot of documents. I try to read everything and you know, sure, uh, catch up what everyone else knows. But I did meet with Andy today too, just to kind of. Um, over what we know so far. Um, again, with these type of projects, you get an award letter so that says, yes, we'll approve you for the amount you apply for or whatever amount they specify, right? right? You don't always get exactly yeah. what you want, like in life. <laughs> <laughs> so that award letter will detail um, those type of things and then um, they will outline as to the timeline as to when um, uh, within the different phases of the project, you know, when you can apply for the first reimbursement, okay. you, know, you know, and other documentation that you need to complete in order to receive funding from the state. Um, each grant requires a new bank account set up, so 
to set up a all of that and ensuring um, from a legal perspective, contracts and those sure, types of things sure. that uh, set up. So even if we get that award letter sometime end of September or early October or sometime this year, um, we can look at start of construction or mobilization, if you want to call it that, um, sometime early next year. Mm -hmm. Something of that nature. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But um, where we are right now, we are waiting for to hear from the state as to did we get what mm -hmm. we applied for or not. And we were supposed to hear, I believe, in September. Uh, my supervisor said fall, so fall is, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> timeline. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, we are waiting on that one, to be honest. Okay. Um, so for, for Russell, for Meredith, just to make sure the everybody is up to speed on the language, you'll hear us say CDBG a lot. It stands for Community Development Block Grant Program. It's also often referred to as a small cities grant. So you may hear any of that language. And Groton, because of our size, is only eligible um, basically for funding for low income housing, which is why we use the money to help the Groton Housing Authority or Mystic River Homes, which are our low income senior housing here in Groton. So just so you kind of understand that big picture stuff. Any other questions for Layla on this new grant? I'm very excited. I don't know, uh, some of the, uh, Marie and I went over and toured Grasso Gardens and saw the conditions. If the other members would like to go see either Grasso Gardens to see the current conditions and how desperately they're in need of renovations and updates, it's a 50 year old property that has not been renovated very much. Um, or if you ever want to go see Mystic River Homes and see what was done with the community development block grant money uh, in these previous grants, um, Marie and I were able to do that as well. So we could always set up more tours for other people anytime you want to do that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Layla about this new grant application? Nope. Okay, we can move on to housing rehabilitation. Uh, so for housing rehabilitation, similar to uh, the community development block grant type of projects, um, folks, housing rehab for us, uh, for the town, I mean, focuses with the predominantly on single family or multi family homes, but at a small scale. Um, so household, if you qualify, you can apply for housing rehabilitation such as roof improvement or say your HVAC, your electricity is not working. There's instances in our packet, application packet that identify what qualifies as an emergency or you know, some things that aren't necessarily an emergency, but could help um, you know, the living standards and what they need to do. Um, I keep wanting to refer to your last meeting because that's the one I watched and I know now that we missed the one meeting, but um, Peter has the, uh, um, is the gentleman that works with us as a consultant overseeing some of those um, projects. Um, um, this year we've had two uh, developments that he worked on improving. They both are finished um, over the summer. Um, he was waiting on excuse me, windows to be installed in those units and actually that is all completed. Um, I started reviewing a couple of new uh, Want to call them projects, but housing rehabilitation applicants. Um, I've completed, not completed, I've done the initial review on two of those. There's two more that I need to go over, and then I send them over to Peter Tesla, and he does, um, from the contractor perspective, he's looking at um, you know, what work needs to be done and put it together and estimate as to how much it would cost, and then we discuss with the homeowner, um, you know, their options, and then um, if everyone agrees on. The work that needs to be done, then we put a proposal for a request for proposal. So, construction contractors can apply, and then together with the homeowner, we can then discuss who's the best uh, help with those developments. 
Um, so there's right now I'm reviewing altogether about four of those applications. Um, one's Peter, uh, Peter Tesla, I want to say Tesla, but it's not Tesla, sorry. <laughs> Tesla, um, that's his review tool, then we'll know if they are approved or not. Um, if they are approved, we'll start working on our development. Um, I do want to say um, another aspect that um, our team found is that well, we do need to improve our marketing on that um, program to residents in the community. Um, I personally, I'll be honest, um, when looking at that whole packet, it can be a lot. And I can understand if a, a homeowner is going through a lot of things, you know, and the house is not in good standing, the last thing you need is someone to throw another packet of things that you to apply for that you might or might not qualify for. You know? So I think um, something that I want to us as a new team in our office to work on is improving that packet, um, improving such as reducing some of the language. Um, not necessarily eliminating the packet, but something you can give a homeowner early on, if, even if it's a one page document, it says, you know, these are the highlights of the program. And if you see yourself fitting into you know, the requirements and how the program can help you, here's the full packet, you know, just to give people that initial understanding of what the program is. Um, that program um, is also limited to available funding too. It's much more small in scale compared to the Grasso Garden mm -hmm. project. Um, the type of work that we typically do within um, those are housing we have uh, projects is some of them can go up to 30,000 in housing remodeling or rehabilitation. So much smaller in scale and individual units, as I said. So, um, but uh, promoting and marketing is is I think the next step that I want to address. Um, also understanding though that it's not going to always be um, that we have funding available, but just so that you know the, the rest of the community is aware of it and those who need the funds have access to that. Yeah, that's that. Great, that's great. That sounds really good, Layla. I'm happy to hear that that's something you want to address. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. So just so that the new people know, this is the one where we will give the money, have the house fixed, a lien is put on the house, and when they pass away or sell the house, the town is repaid at that time. Okay. It's not a bank, and you're not going to make your more yeah. monthly payments. So that's why the funds are limited, because sometimes they run out of funds because people haven't passed away. <laughs> thank you thank you marge thanks for explaining that that's great right now yeah. we do have funding available um and that's why too i want to work on the marketing materials so that you know people are a little bit more aware of you know what the program mm -hmm. is and i feel like a lot of times uh, we are human too we tend to wait until something goes sure. wrong and then um, start researching on some of these things, but it would help when you know ahead of time, you know, right. these are the resources that are available to me and, you know, if you apply early enough, um, there is a wait list and a lot of times that deters people from applying, sure. mm -hmm. but I think I want to encourage people to apply, even if, you know, you're going to be on that wait list, know that you applied and we do go through that list. Actually, if you look at some of our reporting, um, regardless of when you apply, when funding becomes available, we have to go through that list again and you know properly review um, who we can help first, you know, depending on whatever criteria we have, we have established. So it doesn't mean that you're on the list. Maybe you should apply last year that you know it expired or something. No, we will revisit every single applicant that is on that list. Yeah. Great. Does anybody have any other question or comment? Go ahead. If somebody's roof is leaking, that of course is an emergency versus putting in new windows to keep it tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's, that's how you look, different, you look yeah. at those things. You prioritize. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Emergency situation. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like need it, need versus want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I understand this, like you're saying, there's things that are more pressing. Sure, you know, of course. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Was it just first come, first serve, or it's 
need over want. Um, it's not for us, time for us, sir, but if we approve the application um, to start work, that work will start. We will, I think, um, I think I talked with our consultant too. We will not start work on your house and stop halfway. No, understood. Yeah, sure, because sure. at that point, we already promised that. Right, right, right. That's what so we the work we say. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. the wish is that we are always ready. For oh, it. sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's good. Great. Okay, and the next item is the Neighborhood Assistance Grant. So with the Neighborhood Assistance Grant, uh, all the applicants that had applied um, were approved. Um, trying to find my notes, sorry. No, oh, that's okay. Take your time. I think you could go back to you and find some more. There's a lot. There's a lot. Canada, to make sure that whatever resources are out there available as well to local persons that you know we 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 try and capture as much as we can. Um, I think a note that my supervisor told me when I started the position though is that we're not trying to spread ourselves thin, you know, right. with especially the new development plan grant. That's a priority because we can do make a lot of difference with that one. So making sure you know we do everything we can for you know. Layla, can can yeah. you just even for me? Can you remind me the money for the Neighborhood Assistance Act? Is that state money that comes to us or federal money? Um, I believe organizations um, uh, contribute towards. Um, this program through identifying um, the, the organizations that I'm going to go through the list now um, that they want to collaborate with. Uh, so it's not necessarily direct money from the state, but uh, companies that have uh, resources can collaborate with those um, organizations that I need. Um, and oh, then, so you can actually oh. give the organizations the money, but um, the tax deductible aspect of it. Um, okay, okay. So this is money that comes from uh, companies yes, yes. That, that get a tax benefit, yes, so to speak, yes, yes. by donating money to this program instead of paying some taxes. Yeah. So That's can, where the, okay, thank you. That's, I just needed to be reminded where this money came from. Thank you. And which organizations applied and were approved? Uh, so Memorial Library Community of Hope applied. Our Fellows Home applied, Riverfront Children's Center applied, uh, Sacred Heart School applied, um, and they were all approved. Um, and can you, yep, can you tell people a little bit about what each group is going to do with their money or how much they're getting? Um, Bill Memorial is getting 150, um, Community of Hope is getting, it was not getting, sorry was approved for 150. Community of Hope was approved for 136,000. Uh, um, Art Fellows Homes uh, was approved for 5,869. Um, Riverfront Children's Center was approved for 142,500. Uh, and Sacred Heart School was approved for 144,000. Um, so, the smallest one was five or six thousand, and the largest ones were like a hundred and thirty, hundred and forty thousand. Okay, and what kinds of things are they going to do with the money? I don't have the list right now, but um, okay, in the application they didn't need to specify how they were going to utilize the money towards improving their facilities. Okay, um, I do not have a specific list, and I don't want to say something wrong about one and it's not that one. I just thought. It was <laughs> <laughs> sure. But um, I can send you uh, a list. A lot of this information is publicly available. Um, I can send you a list of. Um, what yeah, needs. you can either you can either send us something or you can tell us at the next meeting. That's fine. Yeah. Um, but it in, was... short, in short, I did capture in short like a summary of what each applied for. Build the Memorial Library with energy efficiency window replacement. 
Okay. Uh, so hope was uh, supportive housing, uh, art fellow homes, uh, uh, unit replacements, energy uh, conservation. So it's, uh, it's all energy efficiency within these buildings. Uh, okay. Sacred Heart schools. Um, they didn't specify, but again, like I said, it's all improving their facilities. Um, the Riverfront uh, Children's Center was roof replacement for the Children's Center. So, okay. So resources to, I don't know. So a lot of cap, a lot of capital, capital maintenance. Yeah, exactly. Facility. So facilities, yeah. Okay. Service the community as best as you can. <laughs> Does anybody uh, else have any questions for Layla about the Neighborhood Assistance Act program? Are any of this? I have a couple of questions. <laughs> this money for the Assistance Act program that only comes from companies. Yes. Okay. What about ARPA funding? Have these people? Like the ARPA funding? Um, I do not have the check in differences for who applied for which grant or um, type of loan. ARPA, the ARPA, I believe, is it in the meaning agenda? Yeah. Is it? Oh, but no, ARPA, no, ARPA, no, ARPA, no. no ARPA. We are still, for ARPA funding, we are still waiting to hear um, from the committee as to who is uh, being awarded. Okay. Okay. And that is separate. Uh, Alpha is uh, American Rescue uh, Plan Act. Um, local governments were awarded um, funds um, to um, towards um, regional or local efforts. Um, part of that requirement was the need to establish or work through a committee and review of applicants and ensure that. Um, depending on the needs of the community um, that they allocate those funds appropriately. So it's not, again, it's not you just apply and you get it. Right. Because, you know, so there's a full process that takes through. Sure. Uh, I myself am learning about that too. So it's one of those things that I'm learning about, but I do know um, they are currently reviewing um, who had applied the application deadline is already passed. I want to say something. It was sometime this past summer. Um, so they're still reviewing. Uh, I'm not sure of exact date, but I believe if not later this month, early next month, they will probably announce um, who receives those funds. Um, if not yet by the end of the year, for sure. Now, didn't we discuss ARPA funding trying to get like 100000 to be a match for the um, housing rehabilitation? So I don't think it was ARPA money that was going to be a match for the housing rehabilitation march. I, it was 100,000 from our housing rehabilitation fund where we actually, we had enough fund balance there that the town was proposing to transfer, use some of that money for a matching, matching funds for the grant. And then when the grant, when we received the grant, I believe that money would come back and replenish the housing rehabilitation fund. But by doing that, it gives us more points, uh, what are called points on the CDBG application. And the more points you have, the more likely you are to be approved. Okay. Okay. I got so it was, it was a way to maximize leverage the funding we had available to increase our chances of getting that funding. Okay, I got it now. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. Well, but we all of, sorry, pardon sorry, On the housing rehabilitation that you're referring to, we did apply for ARPA funding and we will, we're still waiting to hear if we get okay. that award. And where that will, those funds will apply to, those funds will be set up in our housing rehabilitation program. Um, independent of our CDBG uh, program income fund. So with those funds will be able to, um, again, either with the emergency, we can define how we want to spend right. those funds. Right. Or define what uh, the community uh, development block grant requires you. 
right. new supplier, the Zaya funds. So there's a little bit more flexibility with the alpha funds, and so that would help with a lot of the effort from that perspective. That's yeah. right. Roughly? Yes, nine, 400, 300,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not a lot. So, well, it's substantial when it comes to low income housing yeah. that people need help. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. And definitely able to help uh, a few families, depending on the needs. Sure. sure. Right. Not everyone needs everything, but you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good, good question, Marge, and, and thank you for reminding us about that, Layla, that that we are asking for some ARPA funding so we yeah. can have other other funding available to help low-income homeowners, but through a program that would be less uh, less, do, uh, less onerous than the application for the CDBG. When people go through that, uh, there's more hurdles to jump. Uh, it's very so, easy and very strict, um, necessarily, yeah. you know, it, it deals with the whole nation. Sure. And so, so that, excuse me, is that a federal, that's a federal funding source, ARPA? Yes, yes, that's the federal, that's the big, yeah, that's the big money the federal government's sending to, uh, to states all over the country. And then the it trickles trickles down, so to speak, to the towns. Mm -hmm. I want to say Broughton got somewhere in the vicinity of eight to nine thousand, eight to nine million. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Great. Okay. Any other questions about any of this? Any anything we've talked about that a question or comment popped up that you want to ask before we move on? Our last item for today is looking at our meeting schedule for the next year. And attached to the agenda were four dates for 2023. Meredith, maybe you can look on with Marie next to you there and for. Perfect. I love a, a prepared <laughs> person. <laughs> it's great. So those dates, um, we we chose those months uh, to because they tend to fall at good times in terms of getting updates on the grant applications and how things are going. <laughs> And we like to do the December meeting early in December, so it's not too close to the holidays for any of us. So take a look if those dates look good to you, if someone would make a motion to approve those dates. I'll make a motion to approve those dates. I'll second. Thank, thank you, Marge and Marie. Any comments, questions? Yep, Marie. The December meeting is gonna be December 7th then? Is that right? No, let me look on my thing here. I have six months. No, um, no, no, the 2022. Oh, 20 this year. This year, because I had two dates in my calendar. I had the 14th and the 7th. I think we just oh, you're talking this, this year? This year. Oh, I believe it's the early one in December. Okay. Yeah, I think it was the 7th. Yep, we try to do it as early as possible so we don't conflict get too close to the holidays when it's just all we're all nutty is it mm -hmm. that early date in december work for everybody well yeah. i'm sorry i can't do june because i'm nutty in june <laughs> <laughs> okay so i've got a motion and a second to approve the meeting schedule as proposed all those in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. any opposed any abstentions Okay, that meeting schedule is, is approved. The other thing not on our agenda, uh, maybe I'll just say let's do this at our next meeting. We probably need to do our annual election of officers. Layla, if you could make sure that gets on the agenda for the next meeting.
And so people can think about who's willing to be chair, vice chair, secretary. I'm perfectly willing to stay chair if you'd like me to, perfectly willing to share if someone else would like a turn chairing. Um, but it would be very good to have a vice chair and to have a secretary. <laughs> what was that raised hand, Marge? Uh, vice chair. You're willing to be vice chair? Excellent, wonderful. And good, so others can think about if you, someone would be willing to be the secretary, which just means helping Leila, he, who does minutes, but you know, the secretary also does minutes just to help a little. Okay, anything else for today? Oh, you know, the one thing I wanna say to people is just my little reminder. Uh, to some degree, the reason this committee exists and the reason that we're important is in order for the town to apply for these community development block grant funds, there has to be a citizen committee like us. Um, and so, you know, when people ask you, well, what does this committee do? We make it possible for the town to apply for the, the community development block grants and receive these funds. We receive these updates and we have input as the projects that are funded by these funds uh, as they move along. Um, so that's why, that's why we're important. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, thank you everybody for coming. I'll see, we'll see each other next in December. You can always email, make sure you get Layla's email address. If you can always email if you have a question or a comment. And if any, if we want to have a tour of either Mystic River Homes or uh, Grasso Gardens, that can be arranged. So just let me know or Layla know if that's something you're interested in. Okay? Have a nice vacation. Yeah. yeah. Coming, coming home today, the vacation is <laughs> at the end here. But, <laughs> but it's been lovely. <laughs> Nantucket is a lovely place to spend a few days. So yeah, great. Thank you, everybody. Stay well. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. We'll do the meeting. Oh, motion to adjourn. Thank you, Marge. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Good job, Marge.